Hello, bot fans, and welcome to another edition of Red Square, Blue Square, your go-to for BattleBots recap and reaction. I'm your host, Richard Tiemann, and this is episode number seven, and I must be some kind of lucky to get the two guests I have for you this evening. But before we get into that, remember, if you have not seen the latest episode of BattleBots, tell them, John. Warning, this episode is full of spoilers, so you've been warned. You heard him, folks. All right. So what are we waiting for? Let the bot discussion begin in the red square. He is a rose for any occasion. The dawn of the dad joke and the president of the pun. Chris Rose. Welcome, Chris. How you doing? I'm doing great. That is a, that's a heck of an introduction. I was hoping maybe Farouk would drop by and, you know, <laughs> use use his great vocal cords, but I'll take it. So thank you, Richard. I all right, and in the blue square, he's got hands down the best hair in BattleBots, and I'm pretty sure he would fight you on that. The man who is king of the cliche, Kenny the Manda Florian. Welcome, Kenny. How are you? <laughs> that was that was an excellent intro. I, I, I wasn't sure how, how you were going to be able to top Chris Roses, but you may have succeeded. That was very good. Yeah. First question for you, Chris, is how frequently during the week does Kenny text you a random sports cliche? You know, it's, it's amazing because he's actually quite the wordsmith. Um, you know, I don't have the grown up vocabulary that Kenny Florian does. So he doesn't need to send me any sort of cliches. You know, he went to Boston College and he got, I think, didn't, aren't you an English, weren't you an English major or something? I, I was not. I, I was not. I, I started out political science and then communications. So uh, I guess kind of, sort of, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, but you're yeah. very smart. He's very, very bright. Don't let him fool you. Yeah, he's gotten punched in the head for a living for a while. <laughs> Imagine but, how smart I could have been. See? I mean, seriously. <laughs> Holy smokes. Yes. You could have had this whole GameStop thing figured out Probably. way before it all went to hell. <laughs> That's how smart you could have been. I feel like there's scenarios in your day-to-day -day life where you're at the donut shop and all of a sudden you get a text from Kenny, just do it. Or, you know, you're at dinner <laughs> to win it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Anything that has to do with food, Kenny always says, go for it. Because it's a little known <laughs> fact that, so we only, we shoot the season over basically two weeks, right? A year. And they serve us great food. And you know, for the last few years, I've just kind of let myself go. It was just horrible. You know, I was looking like one of those floats in the Macy's parade. And then finally this season I showed up and I was, I felt better about myself. I was down about 25 pounds. The problem is when you eat with Kenny Florian, the guy just <laughs> inhales food like he's going into the electric chair. He's like, oh my God, did you see what we have for dessert today? And then he grabbed two or three. <laughs> so I'm like, the man can't go down alone. Right? Am I right, Kenny? It's it's funny because it's true, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean the, the breakfast burritos. I, I was I was the worst kind of accomplice. Like Chris is really trying hard. He looks amazing. He's lost weight. He's working out, and I'm the devil on his shoulder, basically. Like, dude, you got to try a burrito. You're like, want me to get you one? I'll get you next. I'll get you another one. And these things are massive. I mean, they're just Huge. all egg and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Chris, Chris Rose and I had some fun. I, I swear to you, my suit was legitimately tighter by the end, by the end of the shooting. I mean, I was, I went well, a little overboard. Yeah, but that's because it's, you know, it's one of those slim suits. I mean, they basically body paint that thing on you every day. <laughs> so of course, yeah, I mean, you know, have an extra burrito and forget it. We're getting to know well, Kenny Florian a little bit too well. Well, I pride myself on having a great mix of guests on Red Square, Blue Square. And I honestly think that you guys are the, the best mix that you can get when it comes to combat robotics commentary. And, and, and I mean that because anybody who sits on the couch and watches any sport will chime in instantly. You know, I could do that. I could. And we see it a lot with NFL kickers. Yeah, I could have made that. Sure, you could have. But the commentary team has got to be a close second and and people just don't understand what all goes into making a team work but yet you guys do you guys are great you have fun and so i'm curious as you know kenny let's start with you how long do you think this took and, and was there a moment when it finally clicked between the two of you 
I don't know. You know, uh, listen, I, I think uh, working with someone like Chris, who has all of his experience and uh, friendliness. Yes, he, he actually is friendly, believe it or not. Um, but, you know, he, he, it, it makes it that much easier, you know, and working with someone like that. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like two buddies in there, you know, calling fights, but also having a lot of fun. And, you know, uh, it, 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 it really has come off, I think, as organic as possible. We have a blast doing it. We literally, there's times where we are uh, crying uh, tears uh, uh, of laughter uh, through a lot of these fights. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of work, but man, we have a lot of fun. And it's just been an absolute pleasure working with someone like Chris. You, you never know. That's the thing. You, you never know uh, if, if it, you're going to jive with someone or if it's going to sound good or you know, if someone's kind of dominating the air or whatever, people get upset about that. And I don't know. I've really never had any issues with Chris in, in that regard. It's just been great. He's a wonderful partner. <laughs> and it is a partnership. Right. There has to be chemistry there. Chris, what do you think about your guys' chemistry over the years? So it's interesting. We have a, a common friend with whom we both worked uh, before we ever met one another in 2015 and a producer named Steve Becker and he's one of my closest friends and and Kenny had the chance to work with him as well and we both talked to Steve separately and we're like you guys are perfect for one another like your demeanor your mentality your humor all that sort of stuff and right away we clicked we just we just clicked and actually Kenny it was that first season where we started driving down to work together right yeah yeah. And I think that that actually helped a lot, you know, because when you don't know somebody right away, you're just trying to figure out, you know, you, you have a certain style, but shows are only going to work when the two of you are on the same page. So as we kind of got to know each other and where we're from and our backgrounds and family history and all that sort of stuff, it's important to get to feel comfortable around somebody because the yeah. more you do that, Kenny used the word, you know, that it's organic and that it's natural. People can tell when they're watching a show and people are full of shit. They know that, okay? And Kenny and I fortunately got along right away. And we've never had a problem with, with one another. If there's any, like, we look out for each other too, you know? We, we've both been through some bad stuff that's happened in our lives too. And, we, and I think we feel like we've been there for one another. And that can only, not only strengthen the friendship, but it helps with the on-air product, man. We're just, I think we're both really lucky that we, that they, that they picked each of us for one another. I mean, that's, it sounds a little sappy, but I think it's true, Kenny. Yeah, for sure. I'd say with great commentary teams, it's, you know, Cotton and Pepper from Dodgeball, Romo and Nance, <laughs> and then Chris and Kenny. I, I mean, that's a great company <laughs> right you. there. We made hey. the top three. Yeah, yeah, but did you hear it? Like Kenny, Kenny had a prediction in this episode and, and it happened and, I was just like, there you are, Mr. Kenny Flory. Like he, he is very Tony Romo-esque in that. Although I don't think that Kenny's getting paid $18 million a year like Romo is from CBS, but I don't. It, yeah, but he, that'd be nice. He's getting it all in crypto. So he's very excited. <laughs> yes. <laughs> very good. Yes, I, good. I do love your guys' yeah. chemistry and I'm glad you guys were able to find ways to make it work. I just, I graduated from sports casting school in June and they talked a lot about commentary and how it's, it's the time off the game and off camera that you have to spend with your counterpart as much as you can to make sure that that rapport and that, you know, chemistry is there, even if you have to force it, but if you can't, which you guys clearly don't, it, it's even better if it's just organic, like you said. Question. So we had a great episode tonight and huge gets a huge win and uh, Kraken a tough loss again by decision. So those are a pair of one and two bots. There's a lot on that one and two bubble and uh, Kenny love that you did power rankings. I'm excited for the for the next set. Uh, how much would you say this episode changed where, where you feel some bots are on that? Uh, well, I'm excited to hear everyone's opinion on my rankings at some point. I'm sure it will, it, will, it will go over great with everybody. Rankings are always a great way to really unite everybody and bring everyone they together. <laughs> they, always awesome agree with, they always agree with your calls. They're like, my yeah, God, yeah. Kenny really nailed it here. <laughs> I've never made one mistake doing BattleBots. It's wild. But um, a few things, as we love to talk about, you know, strength of schedule matters, um, how you perform. Uh, 
uh, out there? You know, are you just kind of squeaking by? Are you getting judges' decisions? Are you getting knockouts? Are you really going for it in your fights? And uh, both those guys, you know, while they don't have the best records right now, um, have shown improvement. I think that's also something to consider as well. These guys are getting better um, and, and they're delivering, they're fighting aggressively and, and they, their losses have been against some really tough bots. So I will tell you this, that was a, that was a big win for Jonathan Schultz and huge because after what happened in the Hydra fight where he had that contraption on the front and it was legal. I mean, I would like to see them change the rules for future seasons. Cause I just think it's, it's not fun. I got to come out and be honest with you. It wasn't fun to watch that fight. It was tough to call. Um, I, I know that most of the battle bots viewing public did not enjoy it. Yeah. But Jonathan was pissed off. He was mad. He was yeah. mad because remember a couple of years ago, he came on the scene and we were like, do you remember the first time we saw huge Kenny? <laughs> we're like, yeah. what the hell is that thing? Right. Like, yep. And yeah. And, and, and I, w I was surprised that it was as effective as it was because it, totally. it was massive and you're like, oh, okay, let's see what this thing could do. And it was so impressive. So impressive. And Jonathan Schultz is kind of the guy who's, you know, happy go lucky and you'll see him stress sometimes in the pits and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but you never see him down or depressed or negative. That was easily the most upset mm -hmm. that we've seen Jonathan Schultz after that last loss against Hydra. And it's almost like you could feel the weight off of his shoulders when he got that when you were like relieved for him, like, okay, good. He's not going to go home so upset or whatever. But this season was tough on a lot of different people. You know, obviously all the stuff that was happening in the background with the pandemic and, you know, um, all the stress that they were going through, you know, got, trying to get their bots ready. They have to deal with so much. They're not on a whole lot of sleep. Um, and I think you really saw that last loss really affect them. I mean, the, these guys put so much into it. Yeah, it'd be a tough uh, loss pill to swallow. So, I, you know, I love both of these bots. I love that it was a quality fight, very entertaining. But, yeah, I think John needed to win more than Matt. And, and Matt was fired up even in the loss. He's like, we'll give you a quality fight every time, you know, put us in that 32. Ribot gets a win over Axolotl. Um, Ribot two and one. So they're continuing their success from last season. Rotator gets their first win of the season. I was talking to Victor last week. I said, do you think that you could have an argument to get in if you're if you're 0 and 3? And he said, I, I'd like to think that we would, but let's hope it doesn't come to that. So right. <laughs> that was a good one yeah. for him. Um, jackpot over Lockjaw. Fight of the night, in my opinion, um, just because it was a huge upset, maybe one of the biggest upsets we've ever seen. Chris, what do you think of this bot in Jackpot, the bot on a budget? Yeah, I think it's great. It's a great story. You know, Jeff Waters Jr. is is the everyman out there. And it it took me back to when I used to call poker uh, for a living. What happened, in, you know, at the turn of the century was guys started learning how to play online poker while also watching um, some of the real famous poker players from over the years on television. And yes, they were their heroes in one eye, but then they were learning how to beat them at their own game because basically their game was on television for the world to see. And I think that's a little bit of what we have seen, and particularly in this jackpot lockjaw fight, you saw how emotional Jeff Waters Jr. was after the fight. He was like, he's in tears. He was literally crying the crocodile tears. Kind of like when Kenny shows up and they said that, I'm sorry, there's no more burritos in the morning. So it, it was very similar. <laughs> And he was like, well, why are you crying? I just beat a legend. I just beat one of my heroes, right? Like that, it resonates with everybody because you've had a whole generation now of young bot builders that have been watching this probably since the Comedy Central days and certainly since 2015 who said, oh my God, it's crazy. I can't build a robot. But then they're like, I'm going to take this leap. And you pour all that time and money and energy and here you are and you're facing down the legend. And you beat him and you're undefeated. Nobody knew who Jeff Waters Jr. was. I mean, literally, he's a plumber from Vegas who could have shown off his plumber's crack to me back in May and I would have had no idea who he was. No idea who he was. And now he's a star. That's pretty cool. It is an amazing story. I do love the the bot on a budget and just how they've come out swinging. They get added to the elite three and O list, which the names on that, Mad Catter, jackpot 
and Bloodsport, which I think, you know, we probably expected Bloodsport to do great things, but how cool would it be Martin Mason to just do some damage in this tournament and, and his, you know, victory speech hoisting that giant nut. That's, uh, that's a, that's a, that's a dream scenario for me. He's amazing though. <laughs> Kenny, he's going to be like on Monday night raw one time. So we're going to be flipping around in the off season. He's going going off the, you know, like the turnbuckle with AJ Styles or something. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna eat the turnbuckle. Yes, like uh, the old George yeah, the Animal Steel. Exactly. He's amazing. He's one of the, he's one of my favorite characters on the show. Yeah, he is. He he, he's definitely working his way up my my ranks as far as fan favorite, just characters, not even bots, but just people right. to, to watch every week. And you know, going back to jackpot real quick, it talked about that raw emotion. And Kenny, as a as a you know UFC veteran, you know all about raw emotion. Like, how much do you relate with guys like that after a big win like that? Oh man, uh, you know, there's there's so much uh, that you're thinking about. There's so much that's going on behind the scenes. You know, um, whether it's a, a a fighter getting into the octagon or, or uh, you know a a team of um, engineers that are about to bring their robot uh, into the battle box, you know, you don't see all the work that goes into it. Um, and these guys have been working literally all day and night to get their robot prepped. And, you know, you're talking about fight after fight and, you know, weeks, years, you know, months, all the stuff that goes into designing and building the bot. Um, you know, it, 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 there's a lot of hard work, a lot of sweat that goes into it. And um, to rebuild every single time um, takes its toll on you. And to see these guys go out and face people that, you know, uh, they looked up to or that they've had a rivalry with over the years and to see them get the win, um, it, it's awesome. Uh, it, it really is. You get, you get pretty close to a lot of these bot builders and you get to know them and um, you hear their backstories and, um, you, you, you kind of root for everybody silently, you know, and um, right. it, it, that, that alone is pretty cool to witness. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun as we're over the midway point of a new BattleBot season. Bloodsport gets a knockout win or a decision win. I'm sorry, a unanimous decision over Kronos because they decided to, I guess, you know, uh, kind of take it back a little bit, which was an interesting call. And then Fusion, another member of the infamous Ewert family, they get a knockout win over War Easy, another bot that you hope can come back better next year because I, I do love the concept and the design. But uh, <laughs> who's the best villains in battle bots? And why is it the Ewert family, Chris? What? <laughs> <laughs> Hold oh, on. God. Um, I, I think they relish that role. <laughs> I, I really think they do. I think they sit around the dinner table before they come out to shoot battle bots and like, who wants to be the nastiest one this year? Who, and who wants to be the nice viewer? And actually, we've been doing them a disservice now for five seasons. It's actually Ewert. Uh, I think that Terry, uh, the, the patriarch of the family, in season two, Kenny, pulled us aside. He's like, do you know what's our last name? I'm like, you Ewert? He's like, no, it's Ewert. And I was like, okay, well, it says here in my battle bots name. It says, it says Ewert in the pronunciation guide. He's like, no, all our friends, no, they don't like you. They don't like you because you mispronounce our name. And I was like, I can change that. He's like, no, don't need to. I'm like, so wait a second, you just. He's got he the book. It, baby, I'm mispronouncing your name and now I can't change it. So I think we tried one time and the bosses were like, nah, nobody's going to know who they are. It's like, what do you mean nobody's going to know who they are? They're the same guys. We're just putting the emphasis on the other syllable. <laughs> what are we doing? That's so good. In fairness, we have a good time with those guys. It's always, I, it's really the number one thing I missed about this season. We would walk around the pits before. The season started before every fight day in the middle of the fight day. And we didn't have that connection. We had to do this. We had to do Zoom calls with everybody. And um, I miss that dearly because these people put so much time and energy in there. And it just you just want to go up and hug them and shake their hands and just say, hey, man, thank you. Because they're the stars of the show. 
we're just the ones that are fortunate enough to bring it to people. Props to all of you guys, cast and crew down there for keeping it safe and making sure that everybody was, you know, uh, adhering to whatever the protocols that they put in while you guys were there. But, uh, you know, again, congrats on a successful season so far. Can't wait for the rest of it. And uh, Scorpios over Tombstone. How crazy of a fight was that? Um, that one also great fight tonight. I think the top four fights uh have to be you know jackpot lockjaw scorpios tombstone rotator valkyrie and even kraken uh witch doctor and so scorpios now two and one tombstone one and two but the lists for these it, it's crazy one and two is huge kraken tombstone rotator as far as notable names and then two and one sub zero malice lockjaw ribot fusion scorpios two and oh copperhead valkyrie uppercut hydra Black Dragon and Beta, which bot, and let's start with you, Kenny, has been just the most entertaining to watch this season. Geez, there's been a ton. Um, certainly that upset over Tombstone was huge for Scorpios. Um, I, I've been really I got impressed. One teacher. Uh, what's that? I got one teacher. What okay, go got? ahead, Chris. <laughs> I think that Mammoth has taken a huge step up. Not only yeah. bot wise, but personality wise, with Ricky Willems, uh, right? I mean, had the huge fight, which was crazy. You know, because of the gymnastics of that thing, it was yeah, that was insane. That was one of the craziest fights I've ever seen. Period. Yeah, because it was moving in ways that we didn't think that it could, and yeah. I think that's what we look for. Like as exciting as certain hits are with tombstone and and you know we saw it in the last fight of tonight's episode with tombstone and scorpios those are great things that we've seen but you always love the unexpected and we we're like holy smokes this thing was like flipping around like and it, it was nuts and ricky williams is a guy who has totally embraced what BattleBots is about he was sitting in our studio audience in 2018 and he was there to kind of scope it out and think to himself, well, can I do this? Can I build a robot? And sure enough, the next year, he brought the biggest robot we've ever seen. And this year, you know, it has seemingly all come together. Totally. Uh, you know, for me, I, I guess it was the uh, uppercut. Uh, yeah. These guys are so quiet. You know, the MIT guys are always trying to talk their uh, opposition up. They don't really make a big deal out of it. But they I mean, their weapon, again, just watching from the outside, looking, and Chris and I are right there, but it looks like they're hitting with such ferocity. It looks like their weapon is hitting harder than anybody's out there. You're like, wait, so are you sure they're at the same, you know, speed as the other yeah. primary weapons? But um, they were just on fire at that point in the season, and I was just blown away by those guys and also Bloodsport. Another team from Massachusetts, not just I'm from Massachusetts, uh, but, uh, you know, they, they were looking really strong. They, you know, only their second season as well. And they had really dialed in uh, their bot. You know, sometimes you get these guys in their second seasons and they try to make too many changes yeah. um, and it doesn't go well for them. Um, but both those guys, you know, made the right kind of changes and, and their bots have just been a lot of fun to watch. It's so funny because there is, such a huge difference personality wise between Ricky Willems of Mammoth and Alex Hattori. Right. Like every time we talk to Alex, we're like, you know, he just blew up saw blaze, his mentor. I mean, literally blew the thing up inside the box. We're like, what just happened? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> like, Alex, come on, dude, give me something, man. You just nearly blew the top off the box. Yeah. Wow. By the way, I, I just want to put this in there because you mentioned about Massachusetts and all this stuff, and we got it. We know all the smart kids come from up up there where you're from. Yeah. Can we get a damn team from my hometown of Cleveland, Ohio? Like enough. <laughs> like if y'all got to steal some wheels off of a car and put them on a robot, fine. Get your asses out to L.A. when we shoot this thing this year, and <laughs> my hometown can represent. I mean, like. Kenny's like, hey, look, Chris, there's another one from Massachusetts. Uh, look at the scoreboard. It's like 90 to nothing in Boston. <laughs> Cleveland's done pretty well. They've done well the last couple of years. Yeah. Lake, so that's good. Yeah, went to the playoffs and won. And then, yeah. you know, but that's something. <laughs> Progress. Good promise. Yes, absolutely. We're on our way. <clears throat>
Well, Kenny, one last question for you, um, because of the format that BattleBots is, you know, very much uh, boxing, UFC, one-on-one -on -one fighting. Have you reached the point in BattleBots where, you know, builders are coming up to you asking, hey, so we've got this fight. What kind of strategy? And I'm not saying that Jake did that when he decided to do the bike rack, but what? the competitor in you has to almost appreciate the strategy just a little bit. I really did, man. You know, listen, I, I think uh, combat is a, a very interesting place. Uh, and sometimes you have to take some very unusual approaches. Um, and also, you know, I talk about this a lot. You know, martial arts really, the, the two words that really describe it best is self-defense. Um, so you kind of have to think about, first, you need to preserve this over anything, right? I, I'm not going to try to hurt someone if that means I get hurt. The idea is hurting with hurting without hurting yourself, right? Uh, that's the ultimate science. So for a lot of these guys, you know, some of these bots are, are, you know, into the tens of thousands of dollars. So in their mind, they're saying, listen, we don't want to take any damage. We got to preserve our bot and, you know, make sure that we make it to the tournament, all these stuff. So I totally get and appreciate that. But, you know, I, I certainly agree with Chris's, you know, assessment of it as well is that that's probably not what the fans want to see sometimes as well. Um, but absolutely, are, are some of the uh, robot builders coming up to me at this point asking me advice? If they did, I would probably slap them at this point. They know way better. They know way more than I do uh, about what they <laughs> should do. I have my opinions, uh, but, um, you know, it, it's cool. It, it, it's always cool to see how they evolve. And, and honestly, you know, I've learned so much. Uh, from watching over the years that I literally have applied some of the same things to how I approach martial arts and how I see fighting uh, from uh, what the robots do. And, you know, I, I think that a lot of those truths that we see in robot fighting apply to in many different aspects of combat and vice versa. So for me, I always love learning from the bot builders and their strategies, strategies and tactics. And, uh, you know, that was no exception last season or, or this season, I should say. You know, people always ask me, well, how much do you know about this stuff? And I was like, well, compared to when we walked in the door in 2015, it's like I could yeah. almost teach a class, you know, to a PhD in robotics, right? Compared to where I was starting from. Personally, I've got the easy job, right? <laughs> like a couple times a fight, I got to go, oh, Kenny is the <laughs> one that explains it, explains what is happening, why it's happening. And he doesn't, you know, as we heard earlier, he went for a poli sci degree. But that was <laughs> way to be on target with that one. So he's not an engineer by trade. So he has to learn all this stuff and how it works and why it works, or in some cases, why it doesn't work, and then translate it for the common fan. So what Kenny does is a gazillion times more difficult than what I do. And I have been so impressed with his ability he sits there, he asks all the right questions to the bot builders and really understands this stuff. So for me, I'm like, where's the on switch? <laughs> <laughs> Chris is definitely exaggerating. Why doesn't this thing work? <laughs> <laughs> what does this do? Don't touch that, Chris. <laughs> well, Chris, who's your favorite bot this season and why is it Rusty? <laughs> Dude, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a crush on the Zach Galifianakis lookalike. There's no question. I did Instagram live with him before uh, pregame last week, and I just, I was even more enamored with him. I just, I love a guy who's like, I'm gonna try this, and he was on his own. Like he was, we have the chance to talk to all the bot builders before the season starts. He was one of maybe three that we didn't get a chance to meet, and so we're just kind of reading through our notes about him. And they're like, he's the only guy on the team? Like, that doesn't – and he's a new guy? How's this going to work? And then we see what the bot looks like. We're like, oh, my God. The salad did bowl. Some, did some second grader build this thing for him? What happened? And he just was remarkable in every sense of the word. And you can see why he's a fan favorite and not just mine. When it comes to the commentary and everything, you guys got two weeks to do this. How much do you go in there and, you know, just just have fun with this thing today? All they tell us to do. <laughs> you know what I mean, we have a lot of work to do. Uh, we, you know, we probably shot 170 fights during the year, something like that. And it was only on 
and we only shot, I think, eight fight days. And there was a ninth where we had to do some, just some on-camera stuff that didn't involve actual fighting. It's a lot of fights. You can't help but have fun. And yeah. everybody is grinding. They are long, long days, but we love it. And the a-hole factor on the set is extremely low because there's too much work to do. And that just makes it so much more fun. Like we're all fired up and we see a good fight. We are, the place is rocking. And we met, that's why we miss the fans a little bit because like when you, when there's like a thousand fans in there, if there had been a thousand fans when, when Saw Blaze got blown up by Uppercut, I don't, right, Kenny, that would have been awesome. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah, no, no question. And, And it was different this season because of that. But, you know, I think the, the bot builders uh, and the teams, you know, uh, filled filled a much needed uh, hole there. But uh, hopefully next season we get the fans back. But you know, there there were so many great fights, and I, I think that you know when you're calling a fight, you're just you're just in the moment, having a great time. Uh, and you know, Chris and I just have a lot of fun calling the fights. But there is a lot of work. You know, you you saw that folder, and and it's about <laughs> eight books thick of information that we have to memorize. Chris and I, you know, always the first couple of days, we always look at each other like, oh man, all right, we got to go over this. Let's make sure we get this stuff. And we're, you know, comparing notes and talking to each other and interviewing the, the bot builders and talking to the producers, getting as much information as possible. And, um, but then, you know, once that fight is about to start, you know, the fun starts. Well, between the two of you, who has um, the most, the record for most takes and what was it that you kept getting uh, tongue tied on? Gotta be me. Gotta be me. <laughs> no shame. No shame. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, we're pretty fortunate. We kind of run through stuff pretty cleanly. We're, we're really lucky. Like there's been times where you, we'll screw up some stuff and we'll just have to pick it up in the middle. It's not as exciting as it sounds. Although we right. did, have, we had one fight where we were literally under the table laughing I don't remember which fight it was. It was our first or second year. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Where we could not, we could not stop laughing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Us could talk. We couldn't even keep it together. <laughs> <laughs> For whatever reason, I think when the fight starts, it's almost easier calling the fights than mm-hmm. kind of doing a doing a line or having to read something off prompter. And, uh, but it's, um, yeah. It. I, I think just being there and watching the fights, the robots are almost doing all the work. We're just calling the action. And, uh, yeah. All right. Well, last question for you guys. I had Bunny and David Eaton on an episode a few weeks back. And uh, I asked them straight up, if you two were to run for office against each other, whether it's, you know, city council, mayor, president, governor, whatever, who would they vote? Saw this. Bunny said Chris. And Dave, well, he wanted to say no at first, but then he went with with Kenny. So I'm curious what your guys' platforms would be. I, I'm sure Kenny, oh my great sports cliche, but but Chris, you you go first. What what would your platform? Well, be? first of all, I would not win because Kenny's slogan would be burrito trucks on the, every corner. <laughs> so, <laughs> that, was, that was literally I my would... platform. You just stole my platform. That's exactly right. Right, and uh, he, I would probably vote for him. There. <laughs> Uh, my, my political aspirations ended after I was the president of my, of my school in high school. That was it. There's too much dark stuff. Now. Uh, and I'll save Kenny from having to answer that. Although he would be yeah. a fine, fine politician. He would be a, uh, a conservative, moderately liberal. Yes, exactly. Exactly. It'd be uh, free burritos for everybody and uh, maybe Bitcoin for everybody. Right, exactly. Like you there get you Bitcoin and you get Bitcoin. Yeah, you get you Bitcoin. You Bitcoin. Get... Hey, Richard, before we go, uh, pick out the the most important thing in your um, in your office behind you and tell us why. Aha. Uh-huh. All righty. Well, the belt is very important, but you guys have seen that. What yeah, we've seen the belt. Is that a whiplash tire up there? It is indeed. It is a whiplash tire. Their fight against Witch Doctor. Nice. So this, the award-winning fan show, I won this two years ago in my home city of Spokane. It's an entrepreneurship award. I was in the media category, which had several nominees, and I won by by vote. So this, you know, it's not participation trophy. It's one that I feel I very much earned. So yes, this is the most important piece in this whole room. It's very nice. Very nice. nice. 
Kenny, do you have a favorite shutter behind you that you'd like to share? <laughs> you know, I love all my shutters equally, uh, to be honest. It's really hard to pick. But, uh, yeah, you know, uh, maybe this one here. Yeah. <laughs> Nice, right. It's a nice shutter. You you have some impressive things there. What 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 do you got there, man? It's like Chris, your turn. Share with us, please. What's the most important thing in your room? All right, so I do have quite an extensive. Uh, bobble I see head. an Emmy in the background for Pete's sake. Look at <laughs> Wait, this. Can I tell you something? I'm not flexing. That is a local Emmy from Cincinnati, Ohio. That's why oh, okay. it's the size of a regular Emmy. I mean, it's an Emmy. I didn't take just a, an Emmy and put it in the dryer and shrink it. That is a local, <laughs> it's a regional Emmy. It doesn't count. My wife put it up there oh. because I got booted off. It, has of Emmy. it still has the word Emmy in it, okay? It does, but it's spelled yeah. E-M-M-I-E, -M -M -E, so it's not <laughs> legit. Um, so, you know, I just left intentional talk after 10 years because they didn't renew my contract, sidebar. So when, when they made a bobblehead of us, you know, I, I was like, holy smokes, like, that's kind of cool. And I showed it to my kids. So that my youngest one was probably six or seven at the time, Brady. And he looks at it and he goes, dad, they gave you way too much hair. I was like, right, that's it. Good luck. there goes your 529 college fund, you jerk. <laughs> and then the other thing that's really cool in here, and for baseball fans, hopefully they will appreciate this. This is a satchel page. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, it's of him with the Kansas City Monarchs in the Negro League, which I think is really, really awesome. He made his major league debut wow. because black baseball players weren't permitted to play in the major leagues until Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier. He made his major league debut, I believe, at age 48 and pitched till he was 59. So I like that because obviously, Whoa. yeah, it speaks greatly to the history. And it's just kind of cool. That, uh, so I kind of like that one. I think it's pretty neat. That's unbelievable. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, Kenny, you got to up your game in the the backdrop department. At least color. I know. I know. You know coat your your shutters there. <laughs> Are you hiding from something, and we just don't know? I mean, should you should you really not be doing this podcast? I'm in the witness protection program right now, so I have the hat down low. You know, people can't see what I'm doing in here. Oh, my All goodness. right. Well, that Hilarious. on that. Oh, we'll do it for episode number seven of Red Square, Blue Square. New episodes of BattleBots on Discovery every Thursday at 8, 7 Central. And new episodes of Red Square, Blue Square every Friday once they get around to being uploaded, whenever that may be. But every Friday, nonetheless. So, Chris, Kenny, thank you guys so much. I haven't laughed that hard in a while. You guys have been great. Absolutely. You. you have to hang around funnier people then, Richard. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for Chris Rose and Kenny Flory, and I'm Richard Tiemann of Red Square, Blue Square. Good night, everybody. <laughs>